Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. I feel like this is a bit deja vu because we've been here before. I think like a year or two ago, I'm not sure, but this is the last time that I'm going to shoot inside of this little tiny room. So I wanted to document that with a simple one light set for you all that will make your studio portraits look beautiful. Sorry guys, did forget to mention MTOGS, you guys have got a full behind the scenes and a full edit. So basically, like I've just said, today we're going to go through a one light setup inside a studio situation. We're going to photograph a little beanie today in this room. Now this room is my living room, it's quite small and I've moved out a chair so that we can basically set something up in here. We're gonna be using one single light. I'm gonna be using my lights, but you can use whichever lights you want to use. We do have a number of different studio resources on the channel, so I'll link part one of the kind of Flash 101 series above now so that you can go and look at that if you are a little bit new to studio, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about it and basically that will help fill in those blanks. If you're new here, then hi, I'm Jess. I am a portrait photographer. I usually take pictures of animals, but I do photograph other things as well. If you'd want to join us for the ride, then that's super. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. The bell icon will give you a notification every single time I upload a YouTube video. I upload every single week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it, always on a Friday at 12 noon. And yeah, that's like kind of what we do here. So welcome to my living room. I did mention briefly at the start that this is the last time we're shooting in here. I think it's probably worthwhile mentioning why. Essentially, we've got the studio space nearly finished now outside, so I'm gonna be moving into there and any future studio related content will probably be from that location rather than in here. But I know that for the last 10 years or so, I've not had a big space to shoot in. So I know that a lot of people are in this boat. And to try and cover that off and help you guys, I wanted to go through a simple one light setup. So behind me, you'll be able to see a stand with a light on, and that's really important. I wanna walk through that in um, a little bit more detail. We're gonna be using one light kind of coming from straight on overhead. Now this is called butterfly lighting. It's a type of lighting that's used where you've got a single source of light usually and it's overhead. So it's like right over the top of the subject. And what that does is it casts a shadow underneath the nose in a human that looks like a butterfly. So that's where the name of the, the lighting style comes from. Now, the benefits of using butterfly lighting is number one, it's really simple light. Number two, it's usually quite flattering if you use a large modifier, so a really large light source. In this instance, I only have a small softbox on there because I know that most of you guys will usually only have small modifiers. So I want to keep this as recreatable as physically possible. So I've got it on my favorite light stand. This light stand has got wheels, it's got brakes, it's super. You can change the height of it with a little lever there. And um, yeah, I think it's great. It's a Pixar Pro stand. I will link that down below because I think everybody should have one. It comes, it kind of breaks down into two parts and the legs fold up and it's really cool. So yeah, I like it. But I'm gonna be using this stand because it's one of my favorite ones to use. You can get away doing this with a normal light stand, okay? You just need to be creative about angling yourself around it to be able to shoot. Downsides of butterfly lighting when it comes to working with pets and animals is that you have to have quite a high level of control of the subject Otherwise, you're gonna basically struggle to get the catch lights nice and level in both eyes. Any slight deviation or tilt off of center from the subject will cause a shift or lack of catch lights in one eye or the other eye. So it's not as easy to shoot with as say, for example, a two light setup, a traditional 45 degree both sides. So it can be a little bit more difficult. You need to have control over where the subject is placed because they have to be underneath that light but a little bit sat backwards from it so that you have a nice spill of light coming around over the front but it is doable in pretty much every situation so if nothing else I would recommend at least trying it once in your next studio session. 
Okay, I'm going to walk through basically where the light is and where the subject should be using Dave. So this is Dave. Um, some of you guys met Dave previously. Um, Dave is going to basically help us out without boring a dog before we bring a dog into this situation. So I'll go and set Dave up. Okay, so when you're looking, do you like my slippers by the way? When we're looking at the light, what we want to have is we want to have the center of the modifier. If you were to draw like a straight line down, it wants to hit just in front of the subject. So the subject wants to be sort of set back from it so that the full force, the center of that light source is kind of hitting in front on the floor. So it's kind of straight down. We've got a slight angle on this because we can't get around that. And then what you want to do is bring your light as close as possible to the subject without blocking your line of sight. Okay, I'm going to put these brakes on. Now, it's also probably quite important to note what's going on on the floor. So I've taped to the front with some tape, but the tape doesn't stick too well to carpet. So I've also just used some of our log store for our log burner to keep these down. Again, things that you can reproduce at home. So Dave's gonna be sat there. It's important that he doesn't go too far back because he's gonna not be hit by the spill of light, okay? The further away this light is from Dave, the harsher the light's gonna get. The bigger the modifier you use, the softer the light's going to be. So you have all of these different ingredients that work into a single pot. Remembering what we've covered previously in terms of our studio lighting and how to set up a good scene, we also know that when we are working and doing our setup, you want to test your settings with your camera with no lights on. So it's important that the scene is completely black before you add a light. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my camera and in this instance today, I'm gonna be just using the Sony A9 II. You can use whatever camera you want, it doesn't matter. And I've got a 24 to 70 2.8 lens on. I'm gonna be shooting at around F9 to F11 in this instance to try and capture the whole face of the subject in focus. That's the aim of the game, to be honest. So I'm gonna be around that point on the F number. My light won't be at full power. Anywhere from half power down is usually normal for me. One eighth power is what I'm gonna go with for today. But that's all relative depending on how strong your light is, how powerful it is. So this is a 600 watt strobe. So it's really powerful. If I was using speed lights, they'd probably be at half power and I'd be maybe at F8 as an example. So it's more important about where the subject is than anything else that's happening within this entire frame. So we wanna keep an eye on making sure that the subject does not move too far back, does not move too far forwards, it kind of stays within their happy place. Now, I'm gonna just test my settings. What I'm looking for, I've just turned my trigger off there. What I'm looking for by taking a photograph of the scene here is a completely black image with no data at all. So when you've got completely black, then you know you can start adding lights. And the reason for that is because you know that any light that does show up is something that you've added. You're in full control of it. So I'll turn my trigger on and what I'm wanting to achieve is a good base exposure of Dave. So Dave's maybe a little bit light there, uh, a little bit light for me personally. I'd rather slightly underexpose in studio. Mainly that comes from photographing humans because you don't want to have um, too bright highlights on the skin. But I'm going to go ahead and just drop the power of the light. So I'm going to go down to 1 16th power on the light and try again. That's much better, much better level of brightness there in comparison to the previous one. With bright being mostly black, we may go up again, but I'm gonna be happy with this for now. So with the light set up and uh, us making sure that our testing has gone okay, it's then time to introduce the subject to the equation. So let's go and get Crazy Beanie and see what happens next. So we're gonna position her pretty much exactly where Dave was. So making sure that she's not too far forwards, but she wants to be in a sit, probably with her bum around here, because by the time her head's up here, we're then pretty much behind the line of this light. So she can't really be any further backwards than here. Okay, so she needs to be right under this light. And if she's finding that difficult, then we'll lift it up. It's important to note, guys, that if you've got a dog that's never been under studio lights before, please do follow our desensitization video. I'll go ahead and link that above now. Let's drop Sprout in. She can she can be a beanie, it's fine, like. Beanie can be a beanie. So. So it's got filtered already.
So we'll just put Beanie in the sit and away, do some sits and rewards. Sit, 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 sit. yes, good girl. Wow, good girl. Sit. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl. Okay, do you want to put her into Wait. position? So that light wise for us was pretty perfect. For anybody who's not familiar, Bright is a working cocker spaniel. So she's very, very busy. You can see all of Bright's basic training in Bright Diaries. She's crazy though. Can I have the snacks and see if she'll handle for me? Sit. Wait. That's perfect positioning from Bright. Wait. Wait. There we go. Ready. Wow. Wow. Good girl. Super. That's beautiful light. Beautiful, beautiful soft light. Okay, be beanie. <laughs> Maybe. Down. Wait. So I'll pop her in a down, wait. Which she can do, she knows better than that. Good girl, down, flat. Just trying to zoom out. Down, flat, good girl. I mean, 10 out of 10 for her. Wait, because I'm faffing. Flat, good flat. Good flat. Wow. I'm just gonna add a little bit more light. Flat, good. Good girl. Okay, so we're gonna just try and do one more where we'll try and position her super perfectly if we can with some snacks. Sit. Wait. Good. Ready. Good, super, awesome. Oh, they're beautiful. So, I mean, guys, that's it really. It's a simple one light shot. Just gotta have the control of the dog to keep them in that area. If you're struggling, lift the light and have the dog on a leash. Easiest way to get around it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll see you all again really, really soon. Don't worry, Beanie, that's not the end for you. Nice, no, so shall we carry on?